In this video, we solve another problem involving applications of first order ordinary differential equations. Uh, this example involves the spread of a virus. This is from page 96 of a first course in differential equations by Zill, ninth edition. The problem statement says, suppose a student carrying a flu virus returns to an isolated college campus of 1000 students. If it is assumed that the virus spreads at a rate jointly proportional to the number X of infected students and the number of students not infected, determine the number infected after six days. Assume that 50 students are infected after four days. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is take everything that's written here and use it to come up with a differential equation and an initial condition um, and anything else that we might need to solve the problem. So first of all, it says a student carrying the flu, flu virus returns to campus. So we have one student with the flu. And that college campus has a thousand students on it. So we've got a thousand students total that may be um, getting sick. And then it is assumed that the virus spreads at a rate jointly proportional to the number X of infected students and the number of students not infected. So what that means is we've got a differential equation there. The virus spreads at a rate. So that's our derivative. That's going to be derivative of something with respect to T. And that rate is jointly proportional. So that means we know it's going to be K times two different things or two or more things, two or more quantities. The number X of infect infected students. So we're using X for those infected and the number of students that are not infected. Well, um, how we, we can interpret that in a couple of different ways. Um, depending on how we think about this student that arrived with the flu virus and this isolated college campus of 1000 students. We could interpret that as saying that there are typically 1000 students on campus and one of them has the flu on the first day. Or we could say that there are 1000 students on campus and one joins them. So there are one, a total of 1001 students on that campus. So um, the textbook, the first course in differential equations textbook, sixth edition or ninth edition, excuse me, by Zill, um, uses this 1,000 students. So they're saying there are 1,000 students on campus, including this one. And so um, we want to keep that in mind here. Uh, let's go back to this uh, statement. It says the virus spreads at a rate that is jointly proportional to the number X of infected students and the number of students not infected. So if there are 1,000 students total on campus and X of them are sick, 1,000 minus X are not sick. So if 50 are sick with the flu, then we have 950 students that don't have the flu. Um, and when it says the virus spreads at this rate, you might say, okay, it's a rate of change, a rate of change of what? Usually this is gonna be measured whenever you're talking about a virus and the number of people affected or a number of, like if you're talking about computer virus, number of computers affected, just something like that, then the number affected per unit time. And if there are X students infected with the flu, we would say that that rate of spread is this instantaneous rate of change of the number of students infected with the flu per unit time. So that's what that sentence means. Then it says, determine the number infected after six days. So what they're saying is when t equals six, um, how many students are infected? And so we're going to, with that in mind, let's say that t is measured in days. And x is the number of students infected. So it's just a count. on day T. Okay, and then there's one more statement. It says, assume that 50 students are infected after four days. 
So what does that mean? Well, on, at time t equals four, that's how many days have passed, x, the number of students infected, is 50. So this is all of our given information. And then using the notation we used here, let's let little x of t um, be the number of students infected and t is time and days. And that's almost enough to solve the problem. Um, we usually need a differential equation and an initial condition. We could use this differential equation and this condition. That's one way we could do it. Um, this condition would be enough to get us um, the value of an arbitrary constant. Um, but we also have another condition. It's not obvious, but this is the initial condition. That one student arrives on campus with the flu. So what that tells us is on day zero, time t equals zero, we had one person that was sick. So you've got x of zero is one, that's an initial condition. You've got x of four is 50, that's an initial condition. If you're saying, why do I need two initial conditions? You don't, you only need one of those to solve the initial value problem. But in order to find this value of k, um, we, need, we need two conditions. Um, if we solve the initial value problem uh, subject to one condition, well, actually, let's, let's just talk about the differential equation first. If we solve this differential equation, it's gonna have two constants in it. It's gonna have a constant of integration in it, and it's also gonna have this constant k. One of these will get you one of those constants, and the other one will get you the other constant. Since I've got two arbitrary constants, I need two conditions. So these are the two conditions that will allow me to find k and the arbitrary constant of integration that comes from solving the differential equation. So I'm going to choose to use this when I solve the differential equation, and I'll use that to find k. So we've got an IVP. dx dt is equal to k times x times 1000 minus x and x of zero equals one. Then we ask ourselves, okay, how do we solve this differential equation? Remember, we always go through our list. We have these first order methods. We can solve differential equations that are separable. They're first order linear. They're homogeneous polar. We can solve differential equations that are Bernoulli equations. And we can solve exact equations. Most of the time when we're looking at applications, it's one of these top two, but sometimes every once in a while, you'll see one of these at the bottom here. So is it separable or linear? Now remember K is just a constant. It's an unknown constant, but it's a constant. And our variables are X and T. So this is definitely separable. You can put all the X's on one side and all the T's on the other. So we'll use the method um, for separable differential equations this time. So let's start by solving the separable differential equation. And the way we do that is we start by separating the variables. So you want to get all the x's on one side and the t's on the other. So I'll divide by this product and then multiply by dt and anti-differentiate both sides. Now this one on the left hand side is easier to recognize if you write it like that. I've got a product of two linear expressions in X. So this is a rational function. If we're anti-differentiating a rational function and it's not one of our inverse trig functions like the arctangent, um, doesn't lead to an arctangent and a derivative and it's not a U substitution, um, then we usually use partial fraction decomposition and that's appropriate here. So I've got one over X times 1000 minus X. 
and that can be rewritten as a over x, so a over the first linear factor, plus b over the second linear factor. Um, for some uh, constants, a and b. This is the partial fraction decomposition of this. So we're anti-differentiating both sides. And in order to do that on the left-hand side, we're going to use partial fraction decomposition. Now, in order to find A and B, we need to clear these fractions. So we multiply the equation by the LCD. So with partial fraction decomposition, you always state the correct form of the partial fraction decomposition then you multiply by the LCD. So you've got x times 1000 minus x there and there and there. You're multiplying everything by x times 1000 minus x. And the x is reduced and these reduce and the x is reduced here and the 1000 minus x is reduced there. And you just end up with a one set equal to a times 1000 minus x plus b times x. Now, because these were linear, non repeated um, factors, the easiest way to solve for a and b is to choose the x values that will cause each factor to be zero. And then when you do that, like if x equals zero, that term is gone and we've got a simple equation we can solve for a. Over here, we'll choose x to equal 1,000 and then when x is 1,000, this will be zero. So we can use, solve that equation for b. Um, so let's, let's write down those steps. We multiply by the LCD and simplify. Then we choose x values. that cause the factors in the original denominator to be zero. So we'll use x equals zero and x equals 1000. And then we evaluate this expression at x equals zero and x equals 1000 and it simplifies a lot. So in x equals zero, we have one equals a times 1000 minus zero, which is just 1000 plus b times zero, so a is one over a thousand. When x equals a thousand, we've got a thousand minus a thousand is zero, so this is gone, and we'll have one equals b times a thousand. So b is one over one thousand. Okay, so now we've got the a and b, so that a over x plus b over 1000 minus x is equal to um, that expression over there. So our new anti, or our new integrand, excuse me, is one over 1000, that's our a over x, plus b over 1000 minus x, and we're anti-differentiating with respect to x. So we solved for a and b, and then we back substitute. a and b into the PFD, the partial fraction decomposition. And then we evaluate these integrals. So we're here now. For that first one, we just get one over a thousand. And the antiderivative of one over x is natural log of the absolute value of x. And then here you can bring that one over 1000 down. And we anti-differentiate again. This time we're gonna let u equal 1000 minus x du in that case is negative one times dx, and then you multiply both sides by negative one to get dx by itself.
So this integral can be rewritten this way. There's a u in the denominator and dx is equal to negative one times du. So it's a negative out there and a du over here. And I think I wanna factor out that one over 1000 as well. So this is one over 1000 times natural log of the absolute value of x minus the antiderivative of one over u which is natural log of the absolute value of u plus a constant of integration, but I'll let this constant of integration absorb both of the constants of integration from over here. And then we have to back substitute u was 1000 minus x. Okay, now remember what the problem statement said. We're trying to determine the number of infected students after six days. So what we need is x is a function of t, and then we need to find x, or we need to evaluate x of t at t equals six to find out how many students are infected. So what I want to do is I want to take this equation and I want to solve for x. So even though this is a solution to the differential equation, I'm not done yet, I need to get x by itself. So the separable differential equation part wasn't too bad. We just had to use partial fractions, which took a little bit. And now we've solved the separable equation. Now you want to isolate x. In order to do that, I will multiply both sides by 1,000. And that will reduce with that. And then over here, or over here, we've got natural log of something minus natural log of something else. I remember from algebra that if you have natural log of A minus natural log of B, that's natural log of A over B. So this becomes natural log of the absolute value of X over 1000 minus X. And that's equal to 1000 times KT plus c times 1,000, that's just a different c, I'll call it c1. And I'm still trying to get x by itself. So I exponentiate to get rid of the log there. e to that power is just gonna give me that expression. So I'll have x over 1,000 minus x. And the absolute value of that is this. So this is plus or minus whatever I have on this side. And then over here, you wanna remember this fact from algebra. If you've got e to some power times e to a different power, you just add the exponents. Usually we would do it with um, variables in the base like this, but it's the same thing, exactly the same properties. If the, base is, if the base is the same, you just add the exponents. We can also do that backwards. So I'm adding exponents here. So this is the same as e to this power times e to that power e to the c1 is just a different constant, I'll call it c2. And plus or minus c2 is just a different constant, I'll call that c3. And I'm trying to get x by itself, so I will multiply both sides by 1000 minus x. And that reduces with that and that. And we've got this here. And we'll distribute. Still trying to get x by itself. We got x on both sides right now. I know this looks complicated, but really, if you've got an x term over here and an x term over here, this is no different than solving a linear equation in precalculus. This is similar to solving like x equals 5 minus 2x. 
Now, instead of a five, we've got that function. And instead of a negative two, we've got a negative times that function, but the principle is the same. If I wanna solve this equation, I just add the two X to both sides and then we simplify that and we divide to get the X by itself. So just keep that in mind, even though this looks complicated, it's not too bad. We're gonna add that to both sides. Don't get distracted by all of the details. You wanna look at the overall structure of things. And then factor out that X. And we're trying to get X by itself. So we're almost there. It's multiplied by something to undo the multiplication. We'll divide. All right, now that gives us the general solution to the differential equation and it's explicit. Now, this solution has arbitrary constants in it. It has that constant k or k from the differential equation and this constant of integration c sub 3. In order to evaluate or in order to find x of t, we need to find the values of those. And we've got initial conditions that will allow us to do that. So remember, when we started, we had this x of 0 was equal to 1 and x of four was equal to 50. By using both of those, we should be able to find the values of C3 and K. So we'll use the fact that x of 0 equals 1 to find one of the constants. When t is equal to 0, that just becomes a 0. So we've got an e to the 0 there. And c3 times e to the 0 in the denominator. And so the k's are gone. So it looks like this is going to allow us to find C3, not k. So x of 0 turns out to be 1,000 times that C sub 3 plus 1 or over 1 plus C sub 3. And that has to be equal to 1 because we had one student on campus that had the flu on day 0. So we'll take this equation and we'll solve it for C sub 3. Just multiply both sides by that 1 plus c sub 3. And then subtract c sub 3 from both sides. So I'll give you 999 c sub 3 equals 1. And then just divide to get that c sub 3 by itself. So c sub 3 is 1 over 999. Okay. So now that means that our x of t is equal to this. It was 1,000 times c sub 3 times e to the 1,000 k times t, all divided by 1 plus c sub 3 times e to the 1,000 k times t. Okay, now you could simplify that. It's got some complex fractions there. 
to get rid of the complex fractions, I'll just multiply the entire fraction by 99 or 999 over 999. The denominator has two terms, so you've got to distribute that 999 gets distributed there and there. Now here we only have one term, so this 1 over 199 and that 999 will reduce and you just end up with the 1000 times the exponential in the numerator. And in the denominator, not, you've got one times that, that gives us this, and then that times that is just a one. And that's our x of t for some arbitrary constant k, but we can find k because we know that when t equals four, x equals 50. So now we'll use the fact that x of 4 equals 50 to find k. So we'll evaluate this at um, 4, because that's our t value there. And you want to set that equal to 50. So you've got this fraction equals 50. So let's multiply both sides by that denominator and then simplify a little bit. So we've got a 1000 here and that's going to be a 4000 times k in that exponent. And then we'll have 50 times, oops there's too many nines there. 999 plus e to the 4,000 k there. Okay, so this is our exponential equation. To solve an exponential equation where you've got exactly the same exponential on both sides, the first thing you need to do is get the exponential by itself. So we'll distribute that 50. Fifty times nine hundred ninety nine is forty nine thousand nine hundred and fifty. I'm doing that on my calculator over here. And then you want to subtract these guys or subtract this fifty times the exponential from both sides to get all the exponentials on the left. And you can do this because these are the same exponential. They're exactly the same. 1,000 minus 50 is 950. And now we want to get the exponential by itself, and it's multiplied by something. So to undo that multiplication, we will divide. And you can simplify, and I know that's divisible by five, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'll, get, I'll let the calculator do the heavy lifting on the uh, arithmetic there. I guess it's not really heavy lifting, is it? But now we're trying to get this k by itself, and it's inside the exponential. So to undo that, we will take the natural log of both sides. And the natural log of e to some power is just the power because those are inverse functions and they undo each other. So you've got that over there. And I think I will simplify that uh, 4995 divided by 95. That's 999 out of 19. Okay, and we're trying to get k by itself. So we'll divide by 4,000 or multiply by 1 over 4,000, same thing, and that gives us k. And let's use a decimal approximation this time, why not? So we've got natural log of 999 divided by 19, that's that. And we want to divide by 4,000 or multiply by 1 over 4,000, same thing, and you get this tiny thing, 9.9 .9, uh, 
um, 9.91, let's say, times 10 to the negative fourth. So you're gonna move that decimal over four times. So that's 0 0.000991. Oh, that's tiny. So that's our K value. We're not finished yet. We were asked to determine the number of students infected after six days. So now that we have K, we can write uh, this uh, solution without that arbitrary constant K in it, and then we can evaluate that solution at um, T equals six, because we're interested in the number of people that are sick after six days. So this is what we've got. We've got X of T equals 1,000 times E to the 1,000 times K, that's 0 0.000991 times T, all divided by 999 plus E to the 1,000 times K, that's 0 0.000991 approximately times t. And multiplying these by a thousand just moves that decimal over three times. You're going to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and that's gone. So this function is 1000 times e to the 0.991t all divided by 999 plus e to the 0.991t. And that's an approximation because we use the estimated value of K. All right, now they asked for the number of infected students after six days. The number of infected students is X and T is the number of days. So we'll just evaluate this at T equals six and we'll round around to the nearest whole number because we're talking about a number of students. Now this is a, a good place, or not a good place to make a calculator error, but a common place to make a calculator error. So let's make sure we enter this correctly. We've got 1000 times E raised to this power. I can just type in 0 0.991 times 6 and hit equals for answer. That's my numerator. And the denominator, I've got two terms. So make sure you put divide. So I've got answer divided by open parentheses. And then you've got that 999 plus alpha e raised to the 0 0.991 times t, which is 6. Oh, don't want the parentheses in the exponent. You have to arrow down to get out of the exponent, put the parentheses or that parent right parent right there and so this is what I'm entering into my calculator it's the same thing but with parents there and there parentheses and there are two of them I guess so um, that's what you get and I get approximately um, 276.7 students so I would I guess I'll round up Maybe that guy's just not sure he's sick yet. Uh, who knows? Not sure how you'd um, interpret that. Our mathematical model gives us real numbers, not um, integer values. So we'll just round up. So approximately 277 students will be sick after six days.